They are in your house. They are in your car. They are in the skies. Now they're coming for you. These haunting words forewarn the reader of coming disaster. A swift global takeover by machines which regulate the Earth's entire human infrastructure. How will the human race respond? Will humans have the ability to retake their world? Or is humanity doomed? This is the Robopocalypse. Linda Orzen reporting from the Oregon City Public Library. I'm waiting for the arrival of author Daniel Wilson, who wrote the book Robopocalypse, which was chosen for the fourth annual community-wide read and soon to be made into a major motion picture by none other than Steven Spielberg. Mr. Wilson's New York Times best-selling science fiction book is set in the not-too-distant future and deals with the consequences of technology becoming much smarter than we are. His work has been compared to the works of such authors as Robert Heinlein and Michael Crichton. So we are waiting out here to see if anything is happening and, oh, I think that's the library director coming this way. Hello, Maureen Cole. Um, would you like to tell us a little bit about the author, um, Daniel Wilson, and his book, Robopocalypse? This doesn't mean that we're going to be overrun by robots in Oregon City, does it? I certainly hope not. I'd be happy to talk about author Daniel Wilson. We're very excited about his coming to Oregon City Public Library on February 23rd at 7 p.m. Excellent. Um, one other thing, you're not a robot, are you? I am not a robot. Okay, thank you very much for that. I think that clears up a lot of our misconceptions here. Oh, good. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about why the author Daniel Wilson was chosen and such a odd book, Robopocalypse? It just doesn't sound like something that a library would choose. Well, um, as you know, we each year we do a community-wide read and we really like to invite the author to visit our library. So I read this book and loved it and learned that um, Daniel Wilson was a Portland author. And I thought, well, if he lives in Portland, maybe there's a chance he wouldn't mind coming to Oregon City. So I called him and he said yes. And then I found out that this movie had been optioned by Steven Spielberg and I was super excited. Wow, that sounds very interesting. I can't wait to meet him. Mm -hmm. um, are there going to be other events surrounding the book reading? There are going to be a couple other events. We decided to this year, instead of just having only the book reading, to try and do a little bit more for potentially other audiences. And one of the events is a talk called Where is Dystopia? by an uh, English instructor from Clackamas Community College named Trevor Dodge. And uh, dystopia is the opposite of utopia, you know. Dystopia is not somewhere we want to be, but it will be fascinating to talk about. Another um, activity that we're going to have is we've invited the Redlands Elementary uh, Lego Robotics team to bring their Lego Robotics and Legos for all ages to the children's room of the Oregon City Public Library so to demonstrate the um, movements that they do during a competition and to have fun with Legos. So anybody can come, or is this just for children? Oh, anybody can come, even adults without children. Even senior citizens, maybe, that, with, that are children at heart? You bet. You're invited, <laughs> Linda. Thank you. I think I may even come to that one. That sounds like an awful lot of fun. This definitely does not sound like the same library that I grew up in. It's much more exciting these days. Well, thank you for saying that. We try to have lots of activities for all the people in our community. Excellent. So you, I, we both mentioned that this is going to become a major motion picture. Do you know when it's going to be coming out? Um, I do. It's going to be coming out on July 3rd of 2013, one and a half years from now. Oh, I can't wait. I do love Steven Spielberg, and I do love science fiction, yeah. especially robot movies. Um, do you think they might cast Will Smith in a part? He's really good in those robot movies. Isn't he so good? I don't know who they'll choose, but maybe we can put in a word with Daniel Wilson. Well, thank you. And thank you very much for taking the time to talk with us today and tell us a little bit about the different things that are happening at the library. Is there anything else you'd like to add? 
Oh, I'd just like to invite everybody to come down to the library and uh, check it out. And you do have books that people can check out, Robopocalypse? Yes, we purchased over 40 copies of Robopocalypse for your reading pleasure, and I happen to know there are a few copies at the library right now. I'm surprised at that. If it's such a thrilling book, I'm surprised there are still books in the library. Well, they, they come and go. We've had them available for quite a long time, so some days there aren't any, and some days there are some. So I will have to get down there and get one myself. Mm -hmm. I love books. Science fiction, mm -hmm. especially science fiction. This is very good. Well, thank you again for uh, taking the time to be with us today and talk about the library. And I'm really relieved to hear that we do not have a robot uprising in Oregon City. I'm sure our viewing public is also very happy about that, too. Right. And I would like to invite everybody to come and join us for any of the different functions that they're going to be having at the library, especially the talk by author Daniel Wilson. It should, I don't think we've ever had an author here that actually had a mo major motion picture. Not who had a movie. We've had several authors, but not who, one who had a, their own movie. So this is really special. Mm -hmm. So thank you again for watching and read the book and come meet the author. Thank you and have a very good evening. See you at the library. I grew up in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, I ended up going to the University of Tulsa for undergraduate, and then I went out to Pittsburgh to Carnegie Mellon and joined the Robotics Institute for graduate school. Then I moved to Portland, Oregon, and that's where I live now with my wife and my daughter. When I was a kid, all I wanted to do was, you know, be a writer and be a scientist. Those were my two uh, things that I always loved. I always imagined myself in a lab coat, just the very stereotypical scientist. That's what I really dug. Uh, so I read a lot. I read, you know, tons of short stories, mostly science fiction. Asimov, Clark, Heinlein, Ray Bradbury. I was also into like Stephen King and Kurt Vonnegut, Philip K. Dick. Um, and I started writing short stories whenever I was in uh, high school. And they were all really terrible. And they all got rejected, rightfully, because I went back and read them recently. And I can say objectively that they were terrible. So. Uh, not able to make it as a writer at 18, um, I ended up going to college and studying computer science. Over the years, I spent a lot of time thinking about robot uprisings. At first, just because I've always really liked robots and you read about, you know, you read fiction and you see a lot of robot uprisings in fiction. So I've, I'm aware of all of those, you know. Um, but also just going through and writing How to Survive a Robot Uprising, I was a journalist for Popular Mechanics. I wrote lots, and artic lots of articles for them. Um, and so you sort of see robots from that angle a lot, because that's how they're often presented to the public to make them more interesting. And so slowly, over the years, all these scenarios and all the different little interesting things that happen in each chapter just sort of accumulated with me. And I you know, realized that I needed to get them all out in, in one place, and that's Robopocalypse.